This one was sent to Corny Drive through at gmail.com from Mikey in New Jersey. What's the story with Ahmed Johnson? He was incredibly over in the mid 90s. He had the look as far as size and muscles that Vince McMahon dreams of, and he seemed like a decent worker. <laughs> he didn't have the best mic skills, but neither did guys like Bret Hart, and Bret Hart became a legend. Oh. I don't even remember Ahmed getting a title shot. What happened? I hate to bring up the race card, but do you think <laughs> him being black had anything to do with it? No, I think him being a fucking dangerous idiot had a lot to do with it. Uh, we've we've done this somewhere. I, I, I apologize to the longtime listeners because we've slandered Ahmed in detail on another program here, I remember, within the last year or two. But... As an overview, holy fuck no. Working with him was like working with a bag of wet hammers. It, it was You didn't know what was going to happen. I mean, he physically, he looked like a million dollars. And that he came up right at the time that Watts came in for that brief little time, and Watts thought he'd found a new junkyard dog. And Vince thought he'd found a new... Well, JYD was not really JYD up there, but it found a you know, whatever. He, he's got that body. He looks like a million dollars. He he can't. He's one of those guys that couldn't talk, but even though you didn't understand a goddamn word he said, he looked like he meant what he was, whatever the fuck he was saying, right? So that wasn't even so bad. It was a great googly moogly. Was what, who started that? Was that fucking gold does somebody every time I'm? It might have been Owen Hart backstage. Every time fucking Ahmed would open his mouth, a great googly moogly. But he was just dangerous. He was dropping people on their head. And also because he suddenly was being pushed. He was from Texas, I, I, as I recall. And I think he'd worked a little a little bit on indies down there. Yeah, he was Moadib in the GWF. And I believe he even worked for Crockett when Crockett started up the NWA again in 94. Yeah, so, and that's, that was, and then here in 95, he's in the WWF. So the point is, he's green, he started late, because he didn't start young. He suddenly, in a short period of time, is in the WWF and started believing that he was going to be the biggest, or already was the biggest star in the business. And it just, it, he just, it self-destructed. And... I think also on that previous in more detailed discussion of Ahmed, we told the story about how, what was it? 90 by 97, 98, he's on a Dennis Coraluzzo show. <laughs> what, what year was that? It, it couldn't have been, it wasn't long after his run. I think I was, I was still in Connecticut. Wasn't I? It probably was 90. I was going to say 98, but it may have been 97. Yeah, but regardless, he's on a show in New Jersey for Dennis Corluzzo, and I remember Dennis calling and telling me what he'd done, and I was still in, in Connecticut. So this was very shortly after his fucking star-making turn in the WWF. Dennis sent a guy to pick him up in what, just a small regular car, right, to just r drive him over to the high school gym or the rec center or wherever this fucking show was being held in a suburban new jersey i think he sent fred rubenstein to pick up ahmed johnson if i remember okay right. and and fred fred actually the most probably adult mature intelligent and businesslike person in at that time in dennis corluzzo's orbit fred fred rubenstein to go pick the guy up in a, a normal car and he got hot because he didn't get a limo and a chauffeur driven limo and said he wasn't going to leave the hotel until they sent a limo to pick him up. And Dennis Corluzzo didn't send a limo to pick him up. What he did was he got on the fucking PA at the show and announced that Ahmed was in town, but he wouldn't come to the show because he didn't get a limousine. So if you wanted to call him and let him know that you were sorry you missed him, here's the hotel he's at, here's the phone number, and here's his room number. And you remember this. Did he not? He ended up picking up the phone pretty much all night from all the people calling him, right? And then yelling at him. But he would still pick up the fucking phone. I believe so. And one of the parts of the story I think you're leaving out is, I believe Dennis had pencils and paper handed out to the people <laughs> in the crowd so they could yeah, write down the phone so number. So they could write it down <laughs> just to make sure. <laughs> ah, but anyway but no <laughs> so so yes question answerer ahmed johnson looked great and 
et cetera. But no, he wasn't a great worker. And he, a combination of just recklessness and being that big and, and hurting people. And also his head got to be the biggest part of him. And so he was through the, uh, through the, the program fairly quickly, but then didn't he end up weighing like 350 pounds? It was like 10 years after that. He was that muscle guy in the WWF. Yeah. The last time I saw a photo of him, I don't remember when it was from, but he had gained a considerable amount of weight. Well, there you go. I guess um, once you get off all of the supplements and everything, but I guess continue eating like a horse, that's what happens. He got hurt. I mean, he was hurting himself. I shouldn't say hurting himself, but he was getting hurt a lot from almost the moment he got there, wasn't he? Well, yeah. Well, well, yeah. And see, that's the, <laughs> I was talking about him, how many people he was hurting and potatoing, but he was also... I think that's what ultimately did him in. And then they said, man, well, maybe we're better off without him. But he was hurting himself also because all his muscles were tearing. Because, I mean, look at him. He was jacked to the gills. And he was, I don't know what how old he was at that point, but he was not a young guy to have only been in the wrestling business for three or four years or whatever. But he was either hurting somebody or hurting himself on a regular basis. And nobody enjoyed having to fucking try to get a match out of him. Yeah, they put him in there with Ron Simmons. That was the first feud that Farouk had was Ahmed Johnson. And like that's right, right. Away, well, right away, he got hurt. <laughs> well, but that, that's also, that's what they were trying to, okay, here's what we would like Ahmed Johnson to be in the ring, is, you know, because there's almost the same size, same power wrestlers, right? Football background. So let's let Ron try to teach old Ahmed. Ugh. Whew. That didn't work.